What's poppin' and welcome back to another episode of Fletcher the Fisherman, guys. Today we're doing something a little bit different. I've been just kind of looking around, trying to find some new places to fish, and I found two ponds that look pretty interesting to me that are about like 25, 30 minutes away from me, so I figured I'd give them a shot. One is like surrounded by a bunch of like, it looks like office buildings, and the other one's like in the kind of the back of a neighborhood, and I double checked on Fish Brain to see if people have been catching some fish. It looks like some people have definitely been catching some decent ones out of there. So I saw a bunch of like twos, threes, fours, things like that. No monsters, but I'm sure there's some big fish in there. It definitely looks like these ponds have been around for a while, so I'm sure these fish have had time to grow. But besides that, guys, I did a giveaway a few videos ago for a reel, so I'm gonna go ahead and pop the winner of that giveaway up right now. So if that is you, just comment your Instagram name down below and I will shoot you a DM and we'll figure out how to send that to y'all. But while we're talking about giveaways, I wanna go ahead and do another giveaway for y'all right now. So today, I'm gonna be giving away the Gomexis TA20 handle. This is one of their new handles and let me pop this thing out and tell y'all about it really quick. So one of the cool things about Gomex's handles is that the knobs are actually made from TPE material which is stronger than most metals and it's also covered with this really nice grip which is great for hot and cold environments both extreme cold and extreme hot and everything in between so you're always going to have awesome grip on your handles. Then the actual crankshaft itself is thicker which allows for maximum cranking power and on top of that there's Japanese high-speed bearings in the knobs themselves which allows for super fast grip which is excellent for all kinds of fishing applications on top of that guys this handle is superior to pretty much every handle on the market for vibrating baits so far as things like vibrating jigs crankbaits you're really gonna feel that vibration in this handle so the second a fish bites you're gonna know it and you're gonna set that hook and this thing will not do you wrong so I promise you guys if you don't win this giveaway check it out I will have these linked down in the description below for Gomex's website so make sure you check it out but besides that guys this handle is also very similar in size to your traditional stock handle so if you're new to the aftermarket handle scene this is a perfect handle for you to get started with so feel free to check it out so if you want a chance at winning that just drop a comment down below let me know what your favorite fishing reel is just drop a comment let me know and I'll pick one of y'all in a future vid but besides that guys we have about 25 30 minute drive to the fishing spot so I will catch y'all when we get there. Just pulling up, guys. Looks like I found a place to park, and hopefully we can go out here and fish without any problems. Let's see what I want to grab. I think we're just going to go with mainly moving baits right now just to cover water. I'm going to go ahead and grab that lipless crank. Good old two-tap has been working wonders for me. We're going to grab a chatterbait. And you know, you know what? I think we're gonna grab a frog as well. And one last thing. Let's grab this little paddle tail as well, just in case there's a bunch of sticks and stuff. But we might end up coming back up here to switch out baits. We're just gonna have to see how it goes. But let me grab my stuff and let's get down there. Here goes nothing. All right. I don't see any no fishing signs, so that's a good start. Ooh, this looks good. There's a bunch of like matted stuff. We got a little waterfall. I'm liking the look of this. I think we're going to start with uh, maybe the paddle tail. Yeah, let's go ahead and break out the paddle tail really quick. Here goes nothing. Looks like it's pretty shallow up against this waterfall. So I'm not feeling like too promising, at least on this side. That side looks a little deeper. No luck up in this first spot. I'm gonna keep walking down here a little bit. This first area just looks super, super shallow. So I wanna to try to find a little bit deeper water. We're just gonna kind of work our way one step at a time down this pond until we find some. All this matted stuff looks kind of nice for the frog. Let me go ahead and grab that and give that a shot. Here we go. Sling this right on top of this stuff. That was a terrible cast. Let's give that another shot. I just missed one right there. Shoot. Mm. 
Well, I'm not really sure what happened right there, but I just had like an awkward hook set. I kind of like hit myself with the butt end in a weird way. Um, let's see if that fish will eat again. Let me see if he'll eat that little paddle tail if I chuck that in there. He might eat that. Something soft and squishy right in his face. Well, I didn't really have all that much luck down here in this lower pond. I think there's like three or four ponds. So I'm gonna go ahead and move up to the next one in the chain. I might need to slow down to something on the bottom. If I don't have any luck at this next pond throwing moving baits, I'm definitely gonna switch gears and try something a little bit slower because I know there's fish in there. I did get a bite on a frog and had a few like, you know, some just kind of knock at it a little bit. So they're definitely here. Made it down to the second pond, and I'm gonna go ahead and give this little two tap a chuck and get it going. Try to cover some water in here. Just pretty much fan cast around this whole thing, see if I can't get anything stirred up. There's not nearly as much grass in here, if any, maybe a little bit of lining in the bottom. So I shouldn't have too much issue throwing this thing around in here, but we're just gonna have to see if these fish wanna eat it. So guys, I'm not really having much luck with the moving baits right now, so I'm actually going to switch over to a little Texas rig crawl, tying on a rage bug, and this one is in blue crawl right here, and it's just like a blue-green mixture, just a little quarter ounce bullet weight three-aught hook, and that should do the trick, and we're just gonna get to flipping with this thing. Looks like she's rigged and ready to go, guys. It's time to get back out there. No luck over here. I'm gonna kind of work my way towards the other end of the pond now. There's some nice bushes over here, which I like to see. Hopefully there's a few fish pushed up underneath them. Let me go ahead and grab that lure back really quick. Let me come over here. There's a tiny little pocket of shade. I don't even know if y'all can see that, but I want to take a cast right up there in that, see if I can get it. Okay, that's not good enough. I need to get right in that shade. These fish will hug stuff super tight. So just let me make sure I get right in that shade pocket. <laughs> Gosh, dang it. <laughs> come on, I can make a better cast than that. There's one. First fish up in that shade line. Let's go. <laughs> let's go. I didn't even feel him eat it. Oh, let's stinking go. Just something felt a little bit off there. Wasn't quite sure what it was. And sure enough, I set the hook and I actually cast it up in that spot like five or six times. And I just didn't like where my cast landed. I like that there was just that tiny little bit of shade right there on the edge of that bank over there. Just enough for a fish to get up in. And all like four or five of my casts before that last one just landed right on the edge and just didn't get quite in there. And sure enough, the second I got in there, this guy came up and smoked it. Glad to get one on the board, finally. I knew I probably needed to switch over to something a little bit slower. This is our first true steaming hot summer weather this week up in the 90s. So these fish are definitely gonna be a little lethargic. Thanks for the bite, bud. Gonna put this down just for a second. Gonna give this lipless another go. I haven't tried it over in this section of the pond yet. So I wanna give it a few chucks before I give up on it. This area seems to be a little bit deeper, which I like with this hot water. These fish are definitely either going to be up in the shade or as deep as they can get. Oh God, I just got spanked right there at the edge. Dang, dang, dang. Okay, so maybe they will eat this thing. So I've been throwing this red crank. I actually want to switch it up. I've been seeing less and less success with it. I want to try switching over to like a shad color one just to see if these fish in here will, will respond to that a little bit better. Let me go ahead and grab that. We're gonna go with this one that is black with a little bit of gold. It's like a very mild gold though. It is, I would say it's shad-like. Looks good. Let's get it back out there. 
watch me just start slaying them now. Sometimes I've had color just make all the difference. It's so weird, but some for some reason bass can be super particular. I've had it make no difference at all, and I've had it make all the difference in the world. No luck with the crank. I'm gonna go ahead and switch over back to our little soft plastic, the little rage bug. See if we can't get a few more with that. These fish are just shut down from this heat wave that's coming in. It literally went from like mid 70s to low 90s in the course of like four or five days. So these fish are definitely probably gonna be a little buckled down. I was ambitious wanting to start with the, with the moving baits, but I figured why not? At least give it a shot. Gonna wiggle down here to this little area and try to flip into some of this muck this is fish much this is probably the area that's the least fish because it's the hardest to get to no luck on this spot we go down here to this little bridge give it a shot I'm gonna try something unconventional we're gonna cast uh, uphill <laughs> into this pond from this this little bridge See if I can't find something in that corner. <laughs> Hopefully uh, I don't hook one that's too big <laughs> if I do hook one. <laughs> I think I might have had a bite there. I'm not sure though, because this thing was like rubbing on that little ledge. Gonna try this side really quick. Straddle this railing so I don't go anywhere. <laughs> There's one. There's one up against those rocks. <laughs> Let's go on the crawl. Fish number two. This one looks like it's a little bit shorter, but a little bit fatter. Healthy looking fish, nevertheless. And I got him right there in top of the mouth. Just how you want it. Textbook. He freaking thumped that thing too, let me tell you. Hit it like a dang freight train. Oh, pop that thing out. Oh, sorry, that bud did not mean to drop you. Did not mean to drop you. Oh. Did not mean to drop you. I apologize. <laughs> but that is a healthy little fish. Thanks for the bite, bud. Oh, just love it when they thump it, man. It's awesome. <laughs> there she goes. Looks like the rage bug might just be the ticket today. Bites aren't coming fast, but we're starting to get some with this. And I mean, if I can get a few bites in this blazing heat, that makes me happy, especially since it's kind of that first wave. Those fish really shut down when that weather first gets really hot. So the fact that they're biting, that is awesome. No more luck at this middle pond. We're gonna move up to the next one. I think there's two more in this little stretch of pond. So let's go ahead and give this next one a try. What's kind of funny is every single one of these little ponds, even though they're all technically connected by a little waterfall, they're all so different. This one is like, you know, I would say the most normal. That bottom one is just covered in grass. And this one looks like a little bit of a mud hole. We got some chocolate milk up here. So it's gonna be interesting to see how this one fishes in compared to the other two. It's like, I don't know, it's, it's interesting that they're all so different. Well, since this pond is a lot dirtier, I'm gonna try this trap again, see if we can't get a reaction strike just from a fish I can't see very well, just relying on vibration, looking for that opportunity. Typically in dirty water, you can have a little bit better luck getting bites on reaction baits. So I'm gonna go ahead and give this a shot, see if there's something in here that wants to bite this thing. gracious good gracious i just got clobbered i just got clobber knocked let's 
There we go. Oh, gosh, dang it. Dang it, dang it. Oh, he came off. Gosh, man. Gee willikers. Let's see if he'll hit it again. Well, on that note, I think I've about had it with these fawns. Tried my best to get a few fish out of here and I successfully was able to get a few, but I'll definitely have to come back and give this pond another shot at some point. You know, these fish are proven to be a little tough today, as expected with this hot weather. So now I believe it's about time to head back to the car, get a well-deserved sip of water, and move on to that next pond that I was talking about, that neighborhood pond. So I actually had to call an audible. The pond that I scoped out online was totally inaccessible. There was just giant trees like all the way around it. So I decided to come over to the golf course and do a little bit of fishing, just tight on time. Didn't really have a ton of time to scope something else out. So I figured I'd go to a place that I knew I could fish. So let me go ahead and grab my stuff out of the rod and we're gonna go give this a try. Looks like that is everything. Go ahead and lock the car and let's get down to the pond. Ugh, gonna give this freaking lipless crankbait another chance, even though I've missed like four fish on it today. I know I can catch a dang fish on it. I just want to see one inhale this thing. And let me get them all in. <laughs> oh gosh, it has been a day. First cast, maybe? There's one. <laughs> There's a fish up in that corner. I saw a bunch of bait up here pushed up against this edge. Yeah, nice one. <laughs> but I saw this um, one pushed up against this edge, or not the fish actually, but a bunch of bait pushed up against the edge. And sure enough, there was a fish hanging out right there with them. And I'm glad to finally get one on that dang two tap. Had quite a few bites on it. There, 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 yes. I can't hold on to the fish. I had the worst butter hands ever. But, but uh, yeah, guys, I finally got one on this two tap. They've been hitting it all day long. I've got like, you know, a solid four or five bites on it, but they just been short striking the crap out of it. Switching things up, gonna go ahead and throw the little drop shot right here. Give this thing a go. See if I can't get anything to nibble on this. I feel like I should definitely be able to get a bite or two on this. Snag. Ugh, that sucks. Had to pop that off. Forgot to bring drop shot stuff, so I just set up a little net rig instead. Hopefully that does the trick. There's one. Got him. Right in that same spot. Ooh, it's a nice one. He's got a little jazz to him. Come on in, bud. Got him on the deadly Nedley. Knew it wouldn't disappoint me. Never disappoints. This little corner back here is loaded with some nice fish. And that's one of the better ones we've caught so far today. A nice chunky one. A matter of fact, popped it right out of there. Solid like two pounder. Really healthy, thick old fish. And what's funny for my little Ned rig setup, I didn't even have a Ned bait, but I had some like cutter R worms in my uh, bag and I just cut off the tail end of it and used that as a little Ned bait. And sure enough, that did the trick. Doesn't have to be fancy, doesn't have to look good to get the job done. Off she goes. Let's see if there's any more hanging out on this little bend back here. This back corner's loaded. She got it. Oh, I just missed another one. Dang. So the reason I think there's some fish hanging out on this one particular bend right here is because this is like the deepest bank in this pond. It drops off really fast. And with this really hot weather, these fish like to, you know, be able to regulate their temperature really well. So you got the shade, you got the deep water, and then you have that nice steep slope. So those fish can easily come up into some shallow water and easily back off into some deeper water to regulate their body temperature. And that's probably why they're chilling right there. But let me try to get this thing back in there. See if we can't find another one willing to bite on this edge. That corner over there is pretty similar, so we might have some luck over there as well.
There's one. Yeah, him. Come on in, buddy. Can't tell how big he is. He's pulling some drag, though. There's a nice little fish. Yeah. Come on up here, right up against that wall. Finally was able to get over here and fish that wall a tad bit. There's been golfers coming through like crazy. So I'm glad I could get over here and first cast on it. Got myself a nice one. Let's go. Solid like almost two pounder right there. Maybe pound and three quarter. They're munching the deadly nettly though. Can't complain. <laughs> oh, she swims. Well guys, I fished this pond pretty thoroughly, so I'm gonna go ahead and walk over to the next one. And the next pond I'm gonna fish, guys, I have caught, I can't tell you how many monster bass out of it. Just so many bass between like five and eight pounds and then a nine or two. It's just a big bass factory. And that's pretty much how it goes. It's either I have a, I either catch a big one or I don't catch much at all. So we're gonna get over there, see how it goes. Brought a glide bait, some other big things, trying to, entice a big boy so i guess all we can really do is get out there try to figure them out and hopefully find us a big one i've arrived at the hog factory go ahead and stick the rods down get situated you know what for fun we're gonna start out with the glide bait we're gonna go ahead and pop this bad boy off and see if we can't get one to commit to this thing here goes nothing the water's really clear this pond's usually kind of dirty so this should be interesting There's one, there's a nice fish. Freaking hammering it. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh, it's a freaking catfish. Oh my gosh. Oh, that went from 100 to zero real quick. Oh, that sucks. Why you gotta eat that? Why do, you, why do you gotta eat that? I really thought you were a big bass. I think that is a first for me. Catfish hits a glide bait. <laughs> <laughs> that is probably the weirdest bait I've caught catfish on. That is odd. Well, I sure hope y'all enjoyed that video. And if you did, make sure you drop a like and subscribe. And if you haven't already, make sure you go ahead and enter the giveaway and check out GoMexis' website and see all their awesome selection on their website. But as always, guys, fasten is a passion. Peace.